Hello, loved ones. Thank you for joining me today. And if you're new to the channel, then welcome to the family. Today, we will review Merit at First Sight Season 16, Episode 6, After Party. This episode was called A Hairy Honeymoon. To be a part of the congregation, please subscribe. To be part of the conversation, please comment. And to be a part of today's offering, please drop a like in the collection plate. And with that, let's get started. This episode was hosted, of course, by the beautiful Keisha Knight Pullman, and her guests were Clint, Eris, and Dominique. Let's get into her first question. Keisha asks, how does it feel hitting rough waters so early on in the marriage? Eris says, it's expected. They are still learning and trying to figure out about each other. It's natural given the circumstances. Dominique says, when you're marrying a stranger, there is a lot you don't know about that person. It's an eight week process, so you're forced to get into deep conversations sooner. Therefore, there could be turmoil early. Clint says, from the stress, the pressure, and everything going on, it's created a little rift, and there's some troubled waters. We then move on to our first clip. It's Dominique calling her mom to share updates. She tells her mom she is more adventurous than McKinley. She wants to do it all. She does not know if he is joking because he says he doesn't want to do things and that he's not going to do it, but ends up doing it anyway. Her mom says maybe he's being truthful and he does want her to push him out of his comfort zone. Dominique acknowledges that McKinley is trying, but there's always a disclaimer. He will say, this isn't something I normally do, but since you're here and we're together, I guess I'll try it. It's like she is pressuring him into doing things. She is a glass half full, and he is being that downward force when she's trying to push the momentum forward. She does not confirm if it's a red flag, but complaining for her is a huge turnoff. Clint believes that he and Gina are very different when it comes to adventure. He lives adventure. It's the pinnacle of his being and it's what defines him. So he's always on the go. It's not that she doesn't have the capacity of being adventurous. He's been adventurous his whole life and Gina hasn't had the opportunity to do that. Eris and Jasmine are on the same page related to adventure. They are both adventurous to a point. Skydiving is where they both draw the line. We then move on to our next clip. It's McKinley apologizing for the horse thing and the selling thing where he takes his joking too far and comes off negative and complaining. What he wants to convey is that it is something he would not do and he's doing it for her because he wants to step out of his comfort zone. He likes that she is pulling him out of his comfort zone. Dominique says that's a huge ask for her. She came into this process wanting to accept someone 100% as they are, good, bad, and the ugly. And accepting this piece of McKinley would be a part of that she would prefer if they did something and then he told her after the fact that he didn't want to do it, but he did it and he had fun. That's different because then he's putting it in the effort on the front end and then filling her in on the back end versus bringing the energy down at first. Neither Clint nor Eris has seen the complaining side of McKinley. Clint believes he is a chill person that knows his lane and he's been there for so long that he needs someone to pull him out of his comfort zone. Eris believes they can grow to enjoy some things that each of them like to do. Keisha then uncovers the elephant in the room and she asks Dominique, Ew, are you just not attracted to McKinley? Dominique says she is attracted to McKinley physically it's the emotional connection that's bringing the whole thing down. We then move on to our next clip. 
itch Jasmine giving Eris a massage. She says this is the most touching they have done since meeting each other. Besides cuddling, Eris feels like it's just the normal progression. They just met as strangers a couple of days ago, so things are just moving at a comfortable pace for the both of them. Eris indicates that he wants to be all the way in and not have meaningless intimacy. He signed up and agreed to be married, but he wants to make sure this is going to work. The emotional connection is going good. It's the physical attraction. He is having an internal battle. He's trying to deal with his lack of sexual chemistry, but don't know how to say it. They are on their honeymoon and he doesn't want to ruin it. She is an attractive person, but he is not into her at this time. He loves her calmness. He is very mellow person and she has a perfect balance. Like she can turn up like when he needs her to and turn his energy up and she can create a very calm and peaceful environment. She has a calming spirit. They then had a deep group discussion centered around the experiment and how do you handle not being attracted to your spouse. Dominique said she would not want to tell anyone she is not attracted to them. She would do what Eris is doing and see how things go. She would wait to see if attraction grows because the moment you tell someone you're not attracted to them, it shuts them down. Eris says for him, do what he's doing now, continue to go on excursions and to continue to see it through. The conversation continued to go deeper. Keisha asks, what is intimacy like with your spouse? For Clint, there is zero intimacy. They are nowhere near that level. He says it's not due to the big blowout of the gingery features or the athletic build that would be an easy scapegoat. He is thinking she is not the normal type of person that he would select for himself, but he wants to see where this journey takes him. Maybe the experts have something in store. They know something that he does not know. For Dominique and McKinley, there is very little intimacy. They have had soft cuddles and they hold hands, but that's about it no making out it is very pg for them for the rest of the episode they discuss the details of clint and gina's blow up sister keisha you know you're my girl but if you're watching i'm going to respectfully disagree with you on many points of course i don't want to upset your growing baby so you might want to tap out now you know we love you over here so maybe next week we can get back on track. And with that, let's move on to our first clip in this series. It's Clint at the group discussion saying that the physical component, typically the girls that he dates in the past were very athletic, slender. That's just the type of mold that he is attracted to. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And like she said, she doesn't like redheads. So here we are. Clint lets us know that the conversation began the day after the wedding. They were sitting in bed and were having an open dialogue and were communicating very well. At that point, Gina said she received the complete opposite person than she thought she was going to be with. He said he normally likes really thin women, adventurous, outdoorsy women, like how he is. That conversation was all brought back to this moment. At the group outing, Gina started the conversation saying that Clint normally likes thin athletic women and he was just playing off of what Gina had already said. Dominique agrees that Gina did start off the conversation by saying, I'm not attracted to Clint and Clint's not attracted to me. Eris thinks Gina Hearing it from Clint is one thing, and maybe Clint saying it in front of everybody else makes it a little different for her, and that's what caused her reaction. Personally, as I always say, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. 
Gina opened the door and told the group they were not attracted to one another. Clint then said what his normal type was, athletic and slender. I have no issue. If he had have been rude and said he did not like thick, fat girls who don't work out, then that would have been inappropriate. He said nothing mean, rude, or derogatory. We then move on to the next clip. And Keisha leads the clip off by saying, all the other wives were offended. It's the wives talking in their group. Dominique says, never expected to hear that. Jasmine says, it was an outer body experiment. Nicole says, you don't vocalize it in front of your wife, people, and in front of five curvaceous, beautiful women. They were offended for her. Keisha asked Dominique, did in some way this hit you in the gut and make you feel some kind of way? Dominique says yes, because she is on the thicker side and her biggest fear was walking down the aisle and McKinley hoping that she was some girl that weighed less. That was her biggest fear. To hear Clint say that out loud, it hit her in her core of what she potentially thought her marriage with McKinley would be like at this point. Basically, she said it bothered her because it tapped into her own insecurity. She is insecure on how men will perceive her. So that struck a chord, not because Clint was rude or disrespectful, but because it made her look at herself. She said nothing about Gina. It's not about Gina or that it could have hurt Gina's feelings. She internalized it. Next, Keisha says something that really rubbed me the wrong way. Keisha said to Clint, do you understand how it was triggering for a lot of the ladies? She used the word triggering, which I think is our overused go-to word to cause someone to feel as if they did something wrong. Does this mean that in a group of average sized individuals, we can't use the words slender or athletic? unless everyone in the room fits the description? I am so confused. Clint responds by saying it wasn't intended to offend. He was just giving context to his typical type. It wasn't meant to besmirch anyone or belittle anyone. He felt like it was a room that he was comfortable with and he wouldn't say that to anyone to hurt their feelings. I believe Clint when he says he wasn't trying to hurt anyone's feelings. I think that is including Gina. Also, he said he felt he was in a room where he felt comfortable. I'm sure he's like, we are all on this show and we all know attraction is a big topic. So let's talk about it. He had already talked about attraction on camera. I can see him being comfortable in that space this next part really got on my nerves. I think Keisha should have just moved on from here, but she, like Gina, had to double down. And she asked Clint, now that you are here, how would you rephrase what you were meaning to say in that moment that did not come across properly? Really, Keisha? It's the did not come across properly for me. Would he like to rephrase saying he likes women who are slender with an athletic build? Honestly, you know I love you, Keisha, but I think she went hard in the paint on Clint in this moment. Just because that's his preferred type, I don't think he is saying Gina or anyone else in the room is not beautiful. Just because I prefer to eat green apples, it does not mean grapes are not good too. Just because I prefer to hear my pastor preach does not mean I don't thoroughly enjoy hearing Tony Evans. I guess that's the part I do not get. This is my biggest pet peeve. If I am at work and I say, X did a wonderful job, that was great. Y will say, you don't think I do great work? It's not about you right now. Just because we compliment one thing does not mean we are tearing down everything else that does not fit that description. Clint makes peace by saying he wouldn't bring up anything about figure whatsoever. He does not think that that was the time or the place for it at all. If he could rewrite the way it went down, 
he would say he normally dates very adventurous people and pretty much leave it at that. That's so funny. So no one is triggered by the word adventurous? That confirms it's not the word. It's our own insecurities that we choose to internalize. That's the real issue. We then moved on to our last clip and it was Clint and Gina talking after Gina met separately with the ladies. Gina, my ex-boyfriend was a ginger. He had a bright red beard. I grew an attraction to him. Clint, do you think the term ginger is offensive? Gina, no, not really. Clint, you're gonna exonerate yourself of saying, I don't think there's any problem in saying he's a ginger. That's totally fine. Gina, I specialize in redheads. Clint, what does that mean? You specialize in redheads? Gina, I work on redheads all the time and they call themselves that. Clint, but you don't like them. You don't think that this is an offensive term to somebody that's of light skin and light hair? Gina, as a hairstylist, no, but I'm very sorry if it offended you. Clint says using the word ginger can be offensive. You hear negative connotations all the time. It's normally talking about skin color, freckles, and hair color. So you're basically taking out a whole category of people saying, yep, don't like that, not into it. Keisha's next question was the double standard for me. She said, and I quote, but don't you think that everyone has a preference though? So Gina can have a preference of someone who does not have gingerly features, but Clint cannot have a preference of somebody slender and athletic? Let's continue to quote what Keisha said. Sure, so what I hear when I hear that is, this just isn't my type. It doesn't mean that this whole category of people are horrible. It just means that traditionally, the people I have been attracted to look a little different than that. Interesting that she gets that it's a type when Gina says gingerly features, but not a type, but is triggered when Clint says slender and athletic. It's only a trigger if you're internalizing it in your own life. Clint indicates that he was pointing out the hypocrisy of what Gina was saying and that she doesn't like gingers. And on the other hand, she's hurt by him saying his preference so she can't have it both ways. I can now resume my sisterly bond with Keisha. She brought it back by saying, as an outsider looking in, it seems like they both have hurt feelings and both are lashing out because their egos have been bruised. Eris thinks Gina is disturbed. Clint is taken aback because they've had the conversation already. Therefore, her reaction to Clint is surprising because they talked about it multiple times. When they talked about it before, Clint thought everything was cool, but now she has a totally different response. He again thinks the response is because it was said in public. Dominique thinks it's because they had their girls talk. And when you're sitting in a circle with your girls and everybody is telling you how it made them feel, it's fueling the fire. She also admits there was drinking involved which may have helped as well. Keisha then ended the episode by saying, it's not the last time and not the first time something like this has happened. Some relationships bounce back from worse than what we have seen, if that is any consolation. Well, that's all for this episode. What did you think? What are your thoughts on the complaining McKinley? Do you think Eris's physical attraction for Jasmine will grow? Are you Team Clint or Team Gina in their three-part saga? Let me know what you think in the comments. We then took a sneak peek at next week's episode. Chris asked Eris in a group setting if he could fall in love with Jasmine. Eris tells Jasmine he's feeling a friend vibe. Jasmine says 
she did not get married to be friends. Clint apologizes to Gina, but Gina says it's unforgivable. It's Dominique's way or the highway. They then return home and move in together. Eris does not want Jasmine to touch the first drawer. Jasmine thinks Eris is bossy. McKinley reveals his living situation to Dominique and she is not impressed. Chris is not in love with Nicole. Wow, we have a lot more to look forward to. Well, until next time, please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, live with intention. Be intentional.